Hey there and welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about something really important in assembly language programming, variables. And let's start by section 1, which is allocating space for initialized data. So let's start by understanding how we set aside space for data that we want to give initial values to. And in assembly language, we do this using something called define directives. And you can think of these directives as instructions to the computer on how much space to reserve for our data. So on the screen right now, you can see that this is the basic structure of a define directive. And to give you an example, here is the number, which is the variable name, the DW, which is the define directive, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is the initial value. So to break this down, number is the variable name, or in other words, the name of our storage box in which we can store the value that we want. DW tells the computer to set aside two bytes of space. And as you may know, DW stands for define word. And finally, we have that number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is the initial value that we can store in our variable. Now, there are five types of defined directives. DB, which stands for defined bytes, and it allocates one byte to the value. DW stands for defined word, allocating two bytes. DD, defined double word, allocating four bytes. DQ, define quad word, and finally DT, which stands for define 10 bytes. And these are some examples of defined directives in action. So the first line you have choice, which is the variable name, DB is the defined directive, and the letter Y is the value that is stored in the variable choice. In section two, we're going to take a look to a program that uses defined directives. So the purpose of this program is simply to display the letter X on the screen. So the first section, which is the text section, we have global start, and this is like the starting point of our program. Next on line six, move ED6 one. And here we're getting ready to write a message with one character. Next move ECX choice, and this is the message we want to write basically. Next, on line 8, move EBX1, and this is the standard output where we are writing to the screen. Next, on line 9, move EAX4, this is system write, where we're actually going to be writing to the screen. Then we have interrupt 0 by 80, and this is how we ask the computer to actually execute that command. Moving to line number 12, move EAX1, this is actually the code for exiting the program, which is known by sysexit. And again, we're asking the computer to execute that instruction by doing int o by 80. And finally, we have section.data where we have a variable called choice. We use the defined directive db, which stands for defined byte, to allocate one byte, which is the character x, to the variable name choice. And when you run this code, it should display x on the screen. In section 3, we're going to talk about allocating space for uninitialized data. So now let's talk about reserving space for data that we don't want to give initial values to. And for that, we use something called reserve directives. These directives just tell the computer how much space to set aside without filling it with any particular values. And on the screen, you can see some of the basic types of those reserve directives. RESB, which stands for reserve a byte. RESW, reserve a word. Reserve a double word. Reserve a quad word and reserve 10 bytes. Now let's move to another topic, which is multiple definitions and initializations. In your program, you can have many definition statements. For example, we can store the letter Y in a variable called choice using the DB directive. Similarly, we can do the same thing with one, two, three, four, five. We can store this number in number one variable using the DW directive. And the last number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, we can store that in number 2 variable using the defined double word directive which allocates 4 bytes to the variable. The computer here is going to arrange those variables one after one in the memory. Also, sometimes we want to initialize multiple things with the same value. Imagine creating an array and setting all its elements to zero. We can do that like this marks times 9 dw0. So this line here creates an array called marks with 9 elements and each element is set to 0. And to show you how this works in practice, let's make a program that displays 9 asterisks on the screen. So first of all we have section text with global underscore start. Again this is our program starting point. And then we're getting ready to write 9 characters to edx registry. 
Then we have stars, which are the characters that we actually want to write. Then we move one to EBX for standard out for writing to the screen as an output. And then after we move four to EAX to actually writing to the screen through the SysWrite system call for writing data to the screen. And then we use the interrupt instruction that is used to invoke the system calls in our 32-bit mode. And it's a software interrupt that transfers control to the Linux kernel, which is simply asking the computer to execute the code. Moving one to EAX, and this is for exiting the program, again through the sysexit system call. And again, we do the interrupt instruction. And then in the section data, we have stars times nine db asterisk. And here we are creating a string with nine asterisks. And when you run this program, you should see nine asterisks displayed on the screen. That's it for our deep dive into assembly language variables. I hope you found this video helpful and easy to understand. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching and happy coding. In the next lesson, we are going to study the constants in assembly language programming.